Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today I want to talk about the PC market over about the last year and over my shoulder here we have a mini ITX system that I just put together this weekend though I already owned many of the parts that are in the build. Now building a system in early 2018, a complete system that is, is actually very difficult to do because there are several components that are uh, just much more expensive now than they were maybe a year ago. Now obviously there are some bright spots in all of this though and that's where I want to start off today talking about the Ryzen 1600 and really just the entire CPU market in general, not just on the AMD side, but AMD's Ryzen uh, processors have actually forced Intel to also up its game with the more recent Coffee Lake releases. Consider a year ago before the Ryzen processors had hit the market at all, the best mainstream machine you could really put together for any kind of reasonable cost was an Intel system with an i7 which was four cores and eight threads. Today, it's actually really easy to get a processor with six cores and 12 threads for relatively cheaply. The Ryzen 1600, for instance, used to be about $250 when it first launched because availability was relatively low and is a very highly demanded processor and today you can find it on Amazon for about $190 and it is still a great chip at a great price especially if you're somebody that's not just gaming with it if you're doing other things that may require more cores and more threads than something like the i5-8400 uh, from uh, Intel then the 1600 is still a great option and it is at a phenomenal price point and that really is indicative of the CPU market in general prices have gone down while core and thread counts and even clock speeds in Intel's case have gone up. Now, of course, you can't build a system without several other core components. Specifically, a motherboard sort of ties everything together. And more good news on that front, we haven't really seen motherboard pricing jump at all. In fact, if anything, motherboard prices for this platform, especially the Ryzen platform, but really just platforms in general, tend to go down over time. For example, the MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard, when it first launched with the Ryzen processors, it launched at about $110, and today you can find it for about $80 and that is the tendency for a platform. It is most expensive to get the motherboard when it first launches and just over time they tend to go down in cost and luckily at least on the AMD side of things those motherboards are going to be relevant not just for first generation Ryzen not just second generation Ryzen but even looks like probably the third generation Ryzen chips may fit into the same AM4 motherboards. Now one component that never really had a great 2017 from start to finish was SSDs and for the most part we're still seeing them at a about the same prices that they were at through 2017. Maybe they've come down a little bit in the past couple of months, but SSDs are still kind of expensive but they're still a part of the system I would recommend investing that extra money in because even though the cost is higher than it may have been towards the end of 2016, at least for your SATA-based ones, they are still worth it uh, being only about 10 to $20 more expensive than you could find them in 2016 where you could get a 480 gigabyte SSD relatively routinely around the $100 price point. Now expect to pay more like $120 for those. So now's where we come to the really painful part of PC building right now, and that is of course the memory side of things as well as the graphics card side of things. Now this system behind me has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 3000 megahertz. And of course it's one of the Corsair LPX kits. And right now, those kits are really expensive, running at about $185 on Amazon. Whereas one year ago today, it was $110 for the exact same kit. Now we have seen memory come down a little bit in the last few weeks, but it's still much higher than I really like to see it. And it makes it really hard to get into PC gaming when you have one component that is absolutely essential for running the rig be so much more expensive, at least with SSDs. If you opt to not go that direction, you can still get a fast one terabyte hard drive for about $50. You can't just bypass memory that way, though you have to have it. And of course, another component that you really almost have to have, and I say almost for a reason, I'll get to that in a minute, is the graphics card. Now, the graphics card in this system right now is an ASUS GTX 1060. It's the six gigabyte variant, and right now it's really expensive. So the first time this particular graphics card was actually held by Amazon and sold through Amazon, it was $270. Today, if you buy this exact same video card through Amazon, you're gonna pay roughly $400. $40. That makes it hard to game now, doesn't it? 
So there's no doubt that memory prices are really hurting your ability to buy a gaming PC right now, but a graphics card that costs that much money that is supposed to be sort of the mid-range card is just killing people's abilities to buy a reasonably priced gaming PC. And I said earlier that you almost had to buy a GPU. It was almost a requirement, and that's because of the new launch of the Ryzen Raven Ridge APUs. And I've talked a lot about them in recent videos, but basically you can completely bypass past the GPU market altogether by buying a Raven Ridge APU, which has a CPU component and a GPU component that all just slot into your motherboard CPU socket. Now that of course comes with a disclaimer. If you're planning on playing games at 4K or even 2K resolution, then the APUs are probably not for you unless you're playing really low end games, but it will get you up and running on pretty much every modern AAA title at 1080p or 900p at reasonable frame rates. And we're talking anywhere from 30 to 60 FPS FPS in most cases. If you're playing esports games, you can definitely run at 60 FPS, if not a little bit higher in some of those cases. And we're talking about like CSGO, Overwatch, League of Legends, those types of games run really well on these APUs. Now, of course, these APUs don't get you completely through the memory market. Obviously, you still have to have memory. In fact, with these things, you really need to have really good memory. So you may spend a little bit more on memory, but it does let you bypass the GPU market, at least for a while, until you feel like actually adding a dedicated graphics card to your system. So of course, I'll leave links to the uh, products that I sort of showed off in this video down below. And that is sort of what the uh, PC market has done over the past about year, in Ryzen's case, a little bit less than a year because it didn't quite launch this time last year. But if you like this video, give me a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know if you bought a gaming PC about a year ago, because if you did, I'm sure you're really happy. And let me know what you put in that gaming PC. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch right here. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.